I'm David Jung, and this is Katie Davis and Scott Ingalls, and we are the Taupo Nui Atea Monetary Policy Team. We recommended the OCR was raised by 25 basis points to 3.25%. We base our decision on the fact that AD will exceed potential output, creating inflationary pressures. To show the impact of each sector that has influenced our decision, we will use an AD bar, which shows potential output, aggregate demand, and when inflationary pressure occurs. Firstly, Katie will talk about potential output, which is how much the economy can grow off its current resources. This will include the output gap and potential output growth. Secondly, oh sorry, each factor that increases potential output will add pink to the AD bar. Secondly, Scotty will look at aggregate demand through analysing each of the four sectors of demand, consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. Each factor that raises AD will add green to the AD meter, while each factor that decreases demand will remove green. Thirdly, I will talk about inflation and the inflationary pressure that occurs when AD exceeds potential output. Then to conclude, I will discuss the reason for our OCR decision. I'll now hand you over to Katie. The output gap is the difference between GDP and potential GDP. New Zealand's output gap is currently negative and small as the economy emerges out of the recession. We know this as the unemployment rate, which is an indicator of spare capacity, is still moderate at 6%, although it has declined from its 7.3% peak. The output gap will contribute to a small amount of potential output. Now to potential output growth. This is how potential GDP Oh, sorry, how much potential GDP is forecast to grow. Growth will come from three main areas. Firstly, through rising productivity due to the implementation of new technology and the benefits of previous investments. An example of rising productivity is the increase in milk solid production per cow, which as you can see here, is two years ahead of trend. Higher productivity means more output is gained from current resources, increasing potential output. The second factor is net migration, which is forecast to rise considerably due to less immigration to Australia. This rise in human resources will mean more can be produced. Thirdly, the employment rate is rising up to 65.1% over the last year. This will also increase human resources. Considering these three factors, we expect potential output to grow by about 3% over the next year. As shown on the graph, we then expect potential output to settle at about 2.5% as the output gap is closed and rising labour force moderates. I will now hand you over to Scott. First of all, consumption growth. Export prices for our milk and timber are at record highs due to strong demand from China. This is raising incomes. For example, as you can see here, dairy farm profitability is at a record high. Remember, with more income, farmers will consume more, creating flow-on effects and raising consumption. As this graph shows, the Christchurch rebuild is gaining momentum and will peak in mid-2015. At the same time, housing construction is increasing in Auckland as a result of high house prices. This is increasing pressure on workers in the construction sector, raising incomes and therefore increasing consumption. National house price inflation is another factor and has reached 8.2%. High house prices make consumers feel wealthier and this increases consumer spending. As Katie explained earlier, net immigration is rising. This will also impact consumption because more people means more goods and more services consumed. Now for factors that lower consumption. Inflationary expectations have fallen to a 21 month low of 3.1%. This decreases the incentive for consumers to buy now and therefore lowers aggregate demand. We believe the low inflationary expectations to be the result of the previous two OCR hikes. These rises increase consumers' interest payments, reducing their dispensable income and reducing AD. The effect of the factors monitored is evident in consumer confidence. As you can see here, confidence was high at 134 points in January as a result of construction, terms of trade and how high house prices, but, if, but it has declined by 8% because of OCR rises. Next up, investment. Some of the profits from high export prices will be directed into investment mainly in the primary and agricultural sectors where commodity prices have been the highest. 
Investment in the construction sector is rising as the price of the Canterbury and Auckland construction increases. As you can see here, consensus for new dwellings has increased 26% on May 2013. Just like in the consumption sector, the OCR rises have lowered AD growth, but this time by lowering business profits. Construction in terms of trade have seen business confidence meet a high in February before OCR rises caused it to decline by 17 points. Now government spending. The national government has announced that it will increase spending to $73.1 in its next budget. We estimate the government will continue to increase spending over the next few years. Next let's look at imports and exports. We expect the New Zealand dollar to remain elevated as appreciations from rises in the OCR make up for depreciations due to falling commodity prices. This will increase imports whilst our key export industries are buffered by the high commodity prices. The positions of our main trading partners are improving. Now, Australia is currently experiencing a downturn, but is predicted to strengthen following mining investment. China's economy is projected to maintain average growth of 7 or 8 percent, and the United States is predicted to grow at 3.1 percent. The strength of our trading partners will increase exports. However, because the New Zealand economy has also been growing at a steady rate, we also expect import volumes to increase. Finally, future AD growth. Over the next few years, terms of trade will weaken due to increased supply of milk products, although its impact in raising consumption and investment will be felt over the next year. The effect of declining terms of trade on demand growth will be moderated by increased construction activity, which is why we expect to see strong growth over the medium term. After the Canterbury construction reaches its peak, we can expect to see the AD growth rate to decline. And with that, I'll hand you back to David. We forecast that without inflationary pressure, inflation will be at about 1% due to rising house, oil and electricity prices. If we zoom in on the AD bar, I can plot 1% inflation there. We estimate 2% inflation to be about there. As you can see, all the AD above the 2% target point is excess demand. To reduce AD, we recommended the OCR was raised by 25 basis points to 3.25%. This will decrease confidence, lower inflationary expectations, and lower house price inflation, contributing to a reduction in consumption and investment. This will lower AD so it is closer to our 2% target point. However, our decision will also cause an appreciation of the NZ dollar. While high terms of trade will buffer most primary industries from the higher NZ dollar, other export industries will suffer. This will effectively increase our dependence on a few commodities, increasing our vulnerability to overseas markets. Going back to the AD bar, you can see that despite our OCR rise, inflation will still exceed 2% over the medium term. We therefore recommend further 25 basis point rises in the OCR over the next year until construction activity peaks. The OCR will probably need to rise to about 5%. We advise gradual OCR rises as opposed to a sudden rise for two reasons. Firstly, monetary policy takes about 12 months to have its main effect. A gradual rise therefore allows us to monitor the economy and make changes as we gather more information. Secondly, a large OCR rise could cause an unplanned for shock to the, econo to the economy, damaging potential output. Over the next year, the OCR may need to be raised to a higher rate if long-term interest rates don't increase high enough due to low overseas rates, if house price inflation remains high despite the LVR rules, or if the price of oil significantly rises due to tensions in the Middle East. The OCR may need to be raised to a lower rate than 5% if there is a, if there is a disruption to our exports like a drought, shock to China's economy, or higher than expected fall in commodity prices, or a diplomatic slash human error like that which caused the botulism scare. We advise businesses to plan wisely as it is more likely the OCR will need to be raised above 5% than to a point below 5%. Well, that concludes our presentation. We now welcome questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. For your first question, you've stated um, that you see interest rates increasing in the future. Why do you think the Reserve Bank would want to give an indication of where interest rates are going in the future? So. First of all, we've got consumers and the businesses need to plan. Yep, so planning is going to be a big factor. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> yep, definitely. Um, 
this could do with their investment, their possible investment for the future as well. Okay, so um, planning and inv how would investment, okay, so you've got to plan whether you're going to make an investment mm -hmm. and if it's going to be, oh, that's a good point, if it's going to be profitable be in the well. middle. Absolutely. Because yeah. if yeah. interest rates rises, then your profits would decrease because your interest payments would rise. Yeah. So that's an important factor. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else? What about um, net exports? Would that would they have to consider how it would affect oh, imports as well? That, yeah, that's a good point. The NZ dollar, they'd have to know have a prediction where the NZ dollar is going so they can monitor their imports and exports. Yep. So it's sort of, yeah, businesses including the export industry. Exports. Uh, interest rates are going to curb inflation, leading to price stability, which is quite important for the consumers. Yeah, so yeah, when the so consumers that's are trying to plan their, uh, whether they want to buy a house or anything like that, yeah. they're going to have to try and factor in those so interest consumers, rates. Yeah. And I think it's also important for the Reserve Bank to make it clear to people that we're keeping inflation under control. Yeah, yeah. for confidence all, all around. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yep. Go for it. Okay, so we've, the main thing, reason why I think we do that is because it's very important for businesses to plan. Businesses need to know to be able to estimate how much profit they can make in the future and raising the OCR to a certain extent will influence their profits by raising their interest payments. Also it's important that consumers can plan, um, can budget and work out whether they should buy a house or not with interest rates. Um, Another key point is that it shows that the Reserve Bank is controlling inflation and makes it clear to people that we're going to keep it at this point and we're raising it to this high because of this factor and so on. Good. Okay. Uh, can you explain the role of inflation expectations in inflation outcomes? Okay. So that's sort of like creating a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? Yeah. Can you explain please? So if people think that inflation is going to be high, they're going to go out and spend now okay. rather than saving. And by spending a lot more now, it's going to increase aggregate demand, therefore Increasing. increasing inflation. Yeah. Exactly. So we're just going to get that inflationary spiral. Yeah. Okay. And then they want to know so if people inflationary outcome, outcomes, they want to know what's going to happen. So does this only affect the consumer sector? Um, also businesses as well, if they expect mm -hmm. inflation yeah. to be high, then they're going to go out and Impressive. make that investment now. Do you think that would have much of an impact on government spending as well? Or Inflationary. Um, government spending, I'm not really, I don't think it would really. No. Governments don't really change that much. But if they're expecting a, an increase in inflation, then following that they'll be expecting the Reserve Bank to change interest rates as well. Yeah, yeah. So, which mm -hmm. is also going to influence their decisions, such as uh, consumers. If they're expecting interest rates to go up, they might fix their home home loan rate rather than float uh, have it floating. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And um, what about other long term effects? So some people, some businesses might think if everybody thinks inflation is going to be high, then the Reserve Bank's going to raise the OCR, so it's going to have that double effect as well. Mm. Yeah. Have we mentioned about the up expectation inflationary outcomes? No. Uh, so. If they see what's happening afterwards, then they'll be able to plan for next time, sort of thing. So, uh, okay, we'll link into planning a little bit. So I think yeah, then. Okay, could I answer it? Yep. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, so inflationary. If people expect that inflation is going to be very high. They're going to go out and spend their money now to avoid paying higher prices later on. So that, in effect, is going to increase aggregate demand, creating more inflationary pressure if there is an output gap, and which will cause the OCR, which will mean that we need to increase the OCR further. So if inflationary expectations are high, then the OCR will need to rise further. If businesses see that um, inflationary expectations are high, and they know that the OCR is good at controlling monetary policy, then they're going to plan for higher OCR rates than they would have otherwise. Okay, good. Um, can you explain how the Reserve Bank can help manage those expectations? Okay, um, so that's just by... Well, first of all, how do they manage inflation? 
they manage inflation by using the OCR. OCR. So mm -hmm. the Reserve Bank would manage inflationary expectations by saying that they're going to be really tough and make sure that inflation stays at the 2% target point. point. Okay. And so just like giving indications. But in that they're giving a bit of stability, aren't they? They're consumers and businesses know that they're going to try and keep inflation in that between 1 and 3 percent yeah so the Reserve Bank hang on, ways it could do it so it could make an announcement the Reserve Bank's role in inflationary expectations so and how they can manage how they can manage so I think another thing is um, I know when GST went up the Reserve Bank did a statement out saying this is only going to be a short term rises in inflation because yeah. it caused okay. the price of everything to go up so they made an announcement so that would be quite important for businesses yeah then. so by controlling inflation uh, people by constantly controlling inflation keeping it between one and three percent then people are going to know that when inflation looks to exceed that yeah the reserve bank is going to act yeah so then that, the yeah, that's ex point. inflationary expectations are going to be I guess you'd say more realistic because they know that with that inflation it's going to come OCR rises yep. so it'll come back down and whenever it does go ab above or below 1% I think they release announcements saying why it has done that and what they intend to do about it okay um, the the main way the Reserve Bank influences expectations is by making well by controlling the OCR and making sure it stays between 1 and 3% um, they also make announcements saying where they expect inflation would go um, just to give people more confidence that they're doing a good job. Whenever it goes above, where, sometimes when it goes above 3% or below 1%, the Reserve Bank can release announcements saying um, it's gone above 1% but we've factored these, we've factored that maybe GST has caused this or something so that consumers know that it's going to stay in that 1% to 3% target band. And if people think that the Reserve Bank is going to be tough on controlling inflation, then they're going to expect inflation to be between 1% and 3% and they're going to plan for that with their wage growth and, and all that stuff. Very good. Thank you. Great. Um, so <coughs> how could the Christchurch rebuild affect um, the New Zealand economy and in particular inflation in New Zealand? So when you answer this question, um, consider both economic theory and knowledge of what's going on at, in Christchurch at the moment. So Christchurch rebuild is one of the biggest effects uh, factors <coughs> when it comes to the increase in aggregate demand at the moment. Yeah. Um, and but it hasn't quite peaked. It hasn't quite peaked. It's going to peak mid 2015, mm -hmm. and then after that, it's going to decrease, but we're still going to be spending a bit of money down there. Yeah, so, definitely. in terms of ferry, that's going to cause a large increase in aggregate demand because there's going to be lots of investment, lots of consumers, consumers getting more income. Yeah. Yep. Government spending as well. Yeah, government spending, yeah. Um, so that would cause a, a large increase in AD. Um, and then in terms of aggregate supply, I think all those investments would start to pay off. They would mean we can become more productive. Mm. And also, aren't they, um, in terms of the knowledge at the moment, aren't they doing a lot of um, work into making it more safe for like, if anything happens in the future? So, so spending a lot. new technology and all that sorts of stuff. Yeah. <coughs> a lot of research into that. And this increase in aggregate demand, when you look at the ADAS curve, is going to increase the overall production of the economy, which is good, yep. but it's going to also increase inflation, demand yep. for inflation. Okay, um, what about economic other than theory? I think it's going to increase wages or well, it's going to increase wages significantly in the construction sector and it's going to put a lot of pressure on builders and people and resources involved in that construction sector. Okay. So in terms of the New Zealand economy it is going to increase inflation. Will it increase the amount of people that look towards going into that sort of trade because there's a large demand for people to work in mm. the construction trade that sort so, of thing. Definitely. So you'll get quite a few young people probably looking to head into that yeah, trade. Yeah. yeah. A lot more, yeah. And what about as it starts to ease off, what are, where, what are those trained people it, going to do? That's a good point, yeah. So we've got to think about the long term of Christchurch. So in the short term it might create more 
skilled workers. Yeah. But in the long term, what are they going to do when um, they're not they rebuilding They contribute Christchurch? to um, the housing shortage in mm. Auckland. Yeah. Which would be, yeah. I but think quite a lot of them come from overseas, so I'm not sure if it would be yeah. A, yeah. a massive problem. But, but if there's increased demand on workers, it's going to rise, make wages go up, right? Yeah. Would that make house prices go up? Because um, it's going to cost more to build a house now. House? Oh no! House, if once the once the rebuild gets underway, house prices will start coming down. Mm. Because there's a housing shortage at the moment, but they'll come down. Okay, but so it cost more to build a house. Yes, that's a good point. Before the earthquake stuff, I think there's heaps of regulation though. Mm, true. Could you just re- repeat the question though? Just um, we had to talk about the impact of the Christchurch earthquake on the New Zealand economy and in terms of inflation and talk about the theory and the knowledge. Um, In terms of the New Zealand economy, because the government's spending a lot in the short term on rebuilding it, in the long term, would would they have... Where are they getting the money from? Oh yeah, that's a good point. The the government, yeah, the government's paying a lot of money to do this, so they're having to borrow that. Yeah, borrow that from overseas. Yeah. So that means that when they repay that debt because it's to overseas people, that money's going to flow out of the economy. Which would. Which would be a a withdrawal. So. Mm. But when the Christchurch earthquake rebuild is completed, the returns will be coming in because there'll be more businesses down there. There'll yeah. be people down there. So in that theory that will probably be more in the long term though because mm. yeah, a lot of people be might be. Long term well, we'd hope because yeah. they've, they've got news articles about businesses saying they don't want to go back there. Yeah. There's a lot of uncertainty but. Yeah. Have we got enough to ask the question? Um, I hope so, yeah. Okay. I'll give it a go. <laughs> okay, so in terms of ferry, the Christchurch rebuild is going to significantly increase aggregate demand because all the, gov- the government's going to spend a lot more money on building things, there's businesses are going to have a lot of investment and all that, the money that's been spent on labourers and stuff will flow through to consumption as they spend their money. Um, in terms of aggregate supply, in the long term we could see an increase in capacity because the new buildings and the new technology that was created from the crash and tree board would help us be able to produce more because it's just better. Um, it would. In terms of inflation, it's going to cause a lot of inflation in the construction sector. That may that inflation may not be so big, or construction inflation in other sectors may not be as large compared to that in the construction sector. And the the inflation will be a from the construction sector will be a driving force that's creating the inflationary aspect, the inflation that we're we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, thank you. Um, so generally when we see commodity prices fall, we also see the exchange rate fall. But to date we've seen some large falls in commodity prices and the exchange rate hasn't fallen to the same extent. So why do you think the exchange rate hasn't fallen to the same extent? Okay, um, firstly OCR rises. Causing an appreciation in the exchange rate. Yeah. So we've got OCR rises at the same time that commodity prices are falling. So that will counterbalance the fall. And another factor is... And they have said that um, exchange rates are expected to fall. If you draw a exchange rate, draw that, um, what, by decreasing it, the price. I think another thing is that overseas, the interest rates are really low. Yeah, the relative interest rates. Mm. So the New Zealand's, rise. New Zealand's like I think the UK's interest rate is zero point five percent or something, and okay. Japan's like close to zero, and the eurozone is zero or below zero or something. So New Zealand's going to be a very good place to invest, and yeah. that's going to, in terms of that diagram, we have fairly high returns. Yeah, so that's going to increase the demand for New Zealand dollars. Yeah, increasing and the price. Would it have anything to do with uh, the talk that New Zealand is a rock star economy and that's Yeah, sort of yeah, thing? we're growing. I think very fast compared to other developed countries. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's. Is there anything else? Um, so what's the question? Again? Um. So be, we're saying that the commodity prices, prices are, are falling, falling, but the exchange rate is not falling. So why are the commodity prices falling? 
Oh, we don't need so to So in terms of commodity prices, we're talking about mainly dairy and overseas. timber. So it's overseas markets aren't de- demanding as much. And that would be because of their low interest rates. Okay. Can I answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's two main reasons why. The first is that the OCR rises have caused our interest rates to increase. And that has meant that it's more profitable to invest in New Zealand compared to other countries like Australia, the UK and the USA. Um, also, in those overseas countries, they haven't started increasing their OCR rates yet, and they have a much lower uh, OCR rate than New Zealand. So New Zealand is a very um, a very profitable place to invest compared to those countries, and that's going to create a lot of demand for the New Zealand dollar, which is going to increase, cause the New Zealand dollar to appreciate. And as the OCR is rising, commodity prices are falling, which is why you haven't seen that decrease. Good. Um, do you think we should intervene in the foreign currency market to influence the New Zealand dollar? Intervention. So is this talking about buying a lot of other currencies to boost their exchange rate? Is that um, what we're talking about? I think about? it'd be intervening in ours because... I think you'd dump a lot of New Zealand dollars. I think you'd sell. So yeah. sell a lot of... Yeah. Okay. Because you don't have to sell a lot or buy a lot of other currencies, but I don't think you can buy a lot. So if the New Zealand dollar, how would the government intervene, or how would the Reserve Bank intervene with the exchange rate? I think you just, I think they just dump heaps of. Dump heaps. What will that do? That'll lower. Was it to yeah, depreciate? Depreciate. That would. Which, I think that would only that cause a very short term effect, though. Because mm-hmm. people know that New Zealand's a really good place to invest, and it's really good compared to other countries. So I think. If you did intervene, it would just cause a very short-term effect. Because it'll go up, the the, New Ze- the exchange rate will go up if there's a lot of demand in for New Zealand dollar. For New Zealand dollar, so and it'll go down <coughs> if there's more supply. Yeah. Okay. So that so the main would be is if that's asking how, then they're gonna increase the supply of New Zealand dollars. But I think that demand is going to be so big compared to that. So let's say that they did, they could court intervene and cause the currency to depreciate significantly. Yeah. Do you think? Mm-hmm. I think it, that'd be worthwhile. What effect would it have? Or what export industries would benefit? Benefit. And wouldn't that money. cause more inflation though? That, that, cause more that inflation. would cause um, the price of the cost of raw materials to go up, yeah. particularly with the Canterbury rebuild. Yeah, so it might not be the best time at the moment, maybe, mm. with the rebuild going on. But in the long term, yeah. it would increase economic growth, but, in but the, it would also increase inflation because increase in maybe. Um, is it a, a, like yeah. is it of high importance to increase economic growth at the moment when it is already growing? We are keeping it between the one and three percent. Mm. Yeah, because the whole. Bend. Whole reason for so increase, I think, increasing those, yeah. I think the main reason is because you've got those export industries that that are emerging and they mm. need to. They might and also, maybe because of growth. the prices falling, especially of dairy, although they're still strong, but they're mm. falling at the moment. So, what, what do we think? Do we think not intervene? What was that? Um, what was the actual question? Just whether do we, we think we should intervene or not? Okay. I'd um, say no. Maybe not in the short term with the amount of economic growth that is happening and going to happen, especially with the rebuild. But in the long term, it might be a good idea, depending on how our economy... Oh, no, I'd just say no. You would need to, you'd need to monitor the commodity prices, because if they... I think... Because we, we do rely very heavily on that timber. I think they're expecting um, commodity prices to stabilise, because they have fallen recently quite a lot. Yeah. Mm. So in the short term with the situation... I think, moment, no, I yeah. think... In the long term, overseas interest rates would increase. I think the yeah. Bank of England is going to increase this next year, so I don't see that. Yeah, I think that the New Zealand dollar will start to depreciate eventually anyway. Okay, yeah. but based on at the moment, it's probably not a good idea to intervene. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, we would recommend not intervening because. Um, because. Overseas inter- over the next year, overseas interest rates will start to decrease, and that will mean that the inter dollar, the price of the inter dollar will fall. Um, Sorry, increase. Oh, increase. Yeah. yeah. Um, another reason is we don't think 
intervening would have a significant impact. We, we think that it might cause the New Zealand dollar to depreciate significantly first, but then because of people have so much faith in the, the New Zealand um, economy compared to other economies, it would just increase back up again. And so basically the costs outweigh the benefits. And there would be some emerging export industries that would suffer because of the high NZ dollar, but we think that they would be able to cope over the medium term. Excellent, thank you. Are we going for time? Are we? So if the exchange rate doesn't fall further and commodity prices keep falling, um, what would be the consequences for inflation? The exchange rate continues falling. It doesn't fall. So exchange rate is high, and commodity prices fall. Hang on. So if it, so if it doesn't fall, what would be the impact on inflation? So we should <coughs> look at demand and supply. So if it exchange rate doesn't fall, if it. No. My mind's gone. No. Back. Okay. So, so it, well, at the moment, commodity prices are falling and the exchange rate is not falling. Yeah. So yeah, what's much. happening at the moment, we need to think about that. And then we also need to think about what's going to happen to inflation if the commodity prices continue to fall. Hang on, it's not about commodity prices, though. it's just if the exchange rate doesn't fall. And commodity and prices, commodity prices continue falling. to fall. Oh, was that part of the question? Yeah. Which means that, well, first of all, we're talking about exports and imports. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a high NZ dollar means more imports, less exports. Yeah. Yeah, so lowering aggregate, aggregate demand. Correct? Yeah, okay, yeah. so more imports mean that that, <coughs> that the aggregate supply is going to increase. Because cost of more, raw materials will be increasing, uh, decreasing. decreasing. Yeah. So that would lower inflation. And then, and then decrease in aggregate demand would also lower inflation, inflation, but also... So if commodity prices fell, then our exports would fall. Yeah. And imports would rise. So that would counterbalance the fall in exports on aggregate demand. So in total, that net exports will not be so, affected. Say that again. So if imports are increasing. Yes. Mm. Oh no, that would decrease, yeah. yeah. It would decrease aggregate yeah, demand. Yeah, yeah. So decrease aggregate demand, increase aggregate supply, that's going to reduce inflation. So it would mean we might need a decrease in OCR? Yeah. Depending on the extent, because if mm. everything else is still growing, what it might mean is that they don't change the OCR, mm -hmm. they don't increase it, because that decrease in net exports might counterbalance increasing. But dairy and other timber sectors. are two of our main export Could I answer? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, if the exchange rate doesn't start falling, then what we're going to see is what we, we forecast that it will start falling over the next year or two but if it doesn't start falling then aggregate supply would be higher than it would have been which would re result in because of the cost of low raw, imported raw materials would be lower that would mean there would be less inflationary pressure and also there'd be less exports and more imports meaning there would be less aggregate demand in the economy as well so what you would see is potential output would be higher aggregate demand would be lower, so there's going to be less inflationary pressure. And just Good. the other oh. part of that question was, um, and if, if the commodity prices keep falling, how would that affect inflation? If commodity prices kept falling, then we would... Um, commodity prices are falling. So what if we just so isolate, isolate... So people are going to get less income. Yeah. Yeah, so pe um, like dairy, timber, all those industries will have less income, and oh, which will create flow and effects mean there'd be less investment and less net exports so overall there'd be less aggregate demand. Good. Okay, we're done. You can relax. We're all finished. Okay, well done guys. Thank you very much. Yeah.